Can you see it? I think we can see it now. I think Venus is just coming inside the sun, and there's a sort of bridge linking the, the, the dark silhouette of Venus to the edge of the sun. I think that's what we're seeing now. So it's as though Venus is stretched out. Yeah, yeah. This has been seen, you know, every time uh, Venus has been in transit before, people have reported seeing this, but nobody really knows what causes it. You're looking at one of the most astonishing photographs I've ever seen. It's a picture of Titan, one of Saturn's moons, taken just this morning as the Huygens space probe parachuted down onto its surface. Now, the latest news is that we've got three pictures sorted out. Masses of data has come back. Three pictures are sorted out, and here they are. Let's have a quick look at them. One, two, three. You're about to witness exactly what happened in the dramatic minutes before, during and after the impact. <laughs> Hang on to your seats because NASA have just gone Hollywood. They've named the mission Deep Impact. The air bubbling out from the entrance is a good sign. It means the extra air they're pumping in is keeping the water at bay. But there seems to be air leaking from other places too. One of the safety divers offers to go down to inspect the leaks. Okay, I met you out. I wasn't wearing flippers, so I couldn't swim. I had to be pulled across the floor of the pool like a sack of potatoes. It was a relief to get to the aqua shack. Tibor, the safety diver, is going to stay with me to operate one of the cameras. And, more important, keep check on the oxygen and CO2 monitor. Tibor means hero in Hungarian, so I'm in good hands. Now the question is, could Archimedes really have done it? Could he have set fire to those ships offshore? Well, he couldn't have used a parabolic mirror because they didn't have the technology to make one. And anyway, to have one that would focus many yards away is very difficult even today. So I think he must have used flat mirrors. Now the way I would do it if I had to do it would be to get a lot of trained people, probably troops, and give each of them a mirror maybe three feet across, a great big square mirror, and get them to stand in ranks close together, shoulder to shoulder, and above the other on steps. And then get each one to turn his mirror until he got his reflection into the middle of the Roman ship. Then he'd have a great bank of flat mirrors, which would be quite like a parabolic mirror. Now, I've set myself up here, you see, with there are four banks of mirrors and three complete sets, making a total of 96 mirrors. And I've tweaked them all so that I've tried to get their reflections in the middle of that piece of hardboard on the back of the boat and it's quite tricky to get them all lined up and as the sun moves around all the reflections move on a bit and they don't quite match but it's very bright there and I want to see how hot it is it's not catching fire but I've got a thermocouple here and I can see that the temperature of the air is about 12 degrees and I'm now going to hold the middle of the thermocouple in the brightest bit of this light so it's obviously extremely hot ah 130 130 degrees, 100, 150, 100, 200, 200 degrees, 210, 220, 230, we've made 230 degrees. That's amazing. And just look at this piece of hardboard. It's quite seriously, ow, it's quite seriously scorched and quite seriously hot. I reckon with a load of really big mirrors, Archimedes might well have set fire to those Roman ships offshore. Ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please. Connect up. This is the final check.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand it over to Lisa now, who's going to perform the countdown. Quiet, please. The countdown will begin from five and work its way down. We need complete silence before I start to count. Five, four, three, two, one. Now the big question is, which of the sounds will get here first, or will they arrive at the same time? To find out, I've got a volunteer called Danny at the far end of the jetty with a great big hammer. And at this end, we've got a hydrophone to pick up any underwater noises. The hydrophone is attached to our volunteer Sid, and our volunteer Gaia is going to be listening for the sound travelling through the air. Now what I need you to do is raise your hand as soon as you hear the sound. Okay, Danny, give it a bash. That's amazing. So you both raised your hands, but Sid, you were, you were first there. Can you hit it again, please, Danny? When the post is struck, it creates a sound wave in both the air and the water. But it moves much faster underwater reaching the hydrophone just a third of a second later. Through the air, it takes another second to reach Gaia. As the probe parachutes through Titan's atmosphere, it will be sampling the speed of sound, revealing clues about the chemical composition and density of the different layers. Scientists do know that one contribution to the heat on Venus is the greenhouse effect. Some gases in Earth's atmosphere are especially good at absorbing heat, like carbon dioxide, which is also known as CO2, and I can show you how that works. I've got two bottles. One of them is filled with air, and that's at the same temperature as the greenhouse. And into this other one, I'm going to put some carbon dioxide from this fizzy drinks machine. Now, that's a bit colder, because it's just come out of the dispenser. I've got a temperature probe to go in each bottle. Stick that in there and I'm just going to switch on the monitors, set the clock to 12, leave them in the sun, and then we'll come back and see if anything's happened. As the sun warms the bottles, the carbon dioxide is absorbing more heat than the air. After half an hour, the air is at just under 24 degrees, but the carbon dioxide is at nearly 27 degrees. This is the greenhouse effect in a bottle. Multiply it by a whole planet's worth of greenhouse gas and you get Venus. The solution can be as simple as a tank of water. Let me show you what I mean. Here I've got two very high buildings built actually out of bread sticks. All right? And these glasses on the top would symbolise the weight of the building bearing down on the towers. Now in this one I'm going to put that tank of water at the top, hoping to soak up the sideways forces. And in this one, I'll put these rocks, which will even up the weight, because otherwise it wouldn't exactly be a fair test. And now I reckon that's about the same weight. And I'm going to start a little bit of an earthquake, all right? And just shake them backwards and forwards. And you can see that the tires are beginning to move. Ah, look at that. I really thought that one was going to go first. It seemed to be moving miles, but the water soaked up the sideways force and the rigid one simply couldn't do it. And look, it's broken off clean at the bottom.